The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we want to wish everybody a wonderful Christmas holiday that started about seven months ago based on what the sales are looking like. So it's booming everywhere, folks. That's what we like to see. Now, let's get on to the markets. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the German DAX. As you can see, I've posted the daily uh, showing the big completion of the pattern that was there and then also the uh, hourly, the hourly chart that shows the big break where we've had the big ABCD and started to rally uh, already today. Now, whether it's going to be much of a rally here or not, you know, we'll have to do one day at a time as what we usually do. We've got a few questions to answer here this morning. And the first one I wanted to just to give a little salutation here. Uh, Dennis Gartman is uh, quitting the business, which is really uh, un unbelievable because he's been doing this for so long. I've known him 40 years. But uh, They've really been banging him up on the Internet, which I don't think they should. But if you'll take a look here, uh, the number one rule that Gartman you know, talks about, he said several different versions of Gartman's rules are floating around the Internet. And the fellow put this was his favorite. But the number one, it's the same thing on my oil painting behind my desk here, is never, ever, ever add to a losing position, ever. Adding to a losing position eventually leads to ruin. Remember Enron, long-term capital, Nick Leeson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Folks, when you add to a losing position, what you're doing is you're telling the market that you're willing to accept more risk in a position that you already know is wrong. That there's nothing more. In fact, it's probably better not to use a stop. Well, that's even that's well, eventually they're going to wipe you out with a stop. But you've got to you've got to decide what the risk is, because you, that's the only thing that's unknown in the equation. You don't know you don't know how much money you're going to make in the thing. The only thing you can that you can protect it. The only thing that you know is that risk. So that's the one thing that you have to hold you know close to your vest. You know that's the the real thing. So keep that in mind. I want to wish Dennis the best. Uh, whatever he's going to go do now. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully that'll be good. Now, one other thing I, I needed to share with you, because I think it's pretty important, uh, Tom Hugard, who I, you folks know that he happens to be my very, very dear friend. I've known him for, see, ooh, 15 years now. But he posted this comment uh, on his site um, over, the, uh, uh, over the weekend on Sunday. Let's get this up here to take a look at it. You'll notice here at the Dow traded below the low of the previous week for the first time in nine weeks. That was yesterday. The last time it did that, it set in motion a 4% correction. The previous time that it did that, it set in motion a 5% correction from the moment the signal went live to the most extreme negative point. These are facts, not opinions. Now, we've had a pretty big move. As Tommy, Tommy was saying just before the show started, that, you know, we're down a full 1% here uh, very, very quickly. So that's going to be an interesting phenomenon if that is, in fact, uh, going to be the case. Now, what I was looking at is because, you know, we posted these uh, patterns that we look at, uh, you know, quite a bit. So let's just get this up here so we can take a look at it as where we were as of uh, Friday. Uh, and you'll notice here that the number that we're looking at here for a 4% correction which would be what we were looking at would be right at a 382 correction, which is at 27,250. Now, I'm not sure. It ought to be pretty close to 27,250. Could someone tell me where that Dow E-mini is trading right now? Because that should be pretty good support. But below that, uh-oh, there's going to be trouble in River City, in my opinion. So someone check that if you could. The uh, I'm having data issues again, but hopefully sometime this week I hope to get them fixed. But uh, if someone would check what the Dow E-mini is trading at right now, please. It's 27,502. So we're 250 points away 
uh, from that uh, that target that we're looking at. Thank you very much, Marshall. I, I appreciate that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's going to be a very interesting thing to uh, to uh, look at as we go through. Now, one of the first questions that someone brought to us uh, over the weekend was the price of Bitcoin. I want to get up to the chart here. Bitcoin does not look very good, folks. We, we said that once it went below that 8,000 level, that it was really big trouble. That was a 78% retracement. Once we went below that, we went all the way down to 6,400. We rallied almost up to 7,900. We're trading at 73. This, this thing is just has lost all support. Uh, now maybe it'll reappear, but right now the Bitcoin, which we've never, I've never traded it, and you know I don't recommend unless you understand what the heck you're doing because there's so many scams out there. You know, there's just one right after another, so keep that in mind that uh, it's not an easy thing. People do trade it, and there are some uh, ETFs, I guess, that uh, do pretty well. There's so many other things to trade. I don't know why you even want to get bothered with it, but. It's like the Pied Piper. Once he starts his little flute, everybody follows along. So we'll have to, uh, you know, wait and see, you know, how it all works out. That's the main thing that we want to look at. Now, since I was gone, we had a couple of big things happening. If you'll notice here, right before we left, we were, we, I mean me, when I took last week off, you'll notice here, this uh, is the natural gas contract. And as you'll notice here, we have gone down and we have completed that ABCD pattern. Now, I left you when we were trading about 2.7 and we were looking for it to come down somewhere between 0.23 and 0.27 and we got to 2.8. So we're pretty much right in that ballpark and we've rallied up to 2.41. Now the key figure to watch today, folks, in the next day or two is 246. And the reason why 246 is important, it will be equal to the, the move that we had on the BC swing that took five trading days. That was back in the middle of November, late November. And then what happened was, if we get that same thing, that will take us right up to that 246, which will equal that BC swing. It will also be a 382 retracement of the whole move way back at 291. And why is that important? Because that would be... Point one, point three would be at point C at 2.73, and point five would be at 2.46. That would be a one, three, five pattern. That's lower tops with perfect symmetry. And if it does that, and if it does that, you know, then you'll be able to see whether it's going to uh, have that harmony that we like to see. Uh, whether it's going to uh, to work up. David White has posted uh, some quotes from Charles Mackey, one of my favorite books, The Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. Uh, men, it has been well said, think in herds. It will be seen that they go mad in herds while they only recover their senses slowly, one by one. Boy, if that's not ever the true case, but uh, we're certainly seeing that in places all across the world today in the rioting that we're seeing in dis different countries. Uh, something's wrong, folks. This is uh, something that's political that I don't want to get into, but there's something not right, as they say. Something smells. I don't know what that quote from... David, you could help me. What was the quote from Mathbet? There, there he comes. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, David. Something is rotten in Denmark, and boy, we have a lot of friends in Denmark. That's for sure. Hey, we're going to take a little break here. We're going to get back. We're going to look at the old piggies for Ruby. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at the little piggies here. We're going to go and take a look at April hogs. These have been in a very nice trading range since April. You're going back to April. You can see the really nice ABCD pattern up to that level. Uh, then you can see the high that was made there in April. Then we had the ABCD to the downside. And then we had the ABCD to the upside. Gee, this is ABCD everywhere. The key here, folks, is look at this. We had this really shallow rally here took six days to do that rally. Can you believe how weak that is? And you can see how it closed. I, I can't buy buying hogs here. They gotta, they've got to prove to me that they're going to do something, and right now they don't look like it. In fact, all of these agricultural things that we look at, the, the corn, the wheat looks okay, but the corn and the beans and the meal and the oil, all of them look very, very negative. It looks like there's not going to be a trade agreement, and that's what uh, Mr. Trump was alluding to today when he was over in uh, uh, in the UK. Uh, so we'll we'll see whether that means very much or not. But uh, there's just a lot of things in this hog market, and considering the news is so very bullish from coming over there, the fact that they still have this terrible swine flu or not, you know, have to uh, just doesn't look like it wants to uh, uh, do very much. Okay, if you remember, and I most think most of you do, when we were talking a week before last, before we left, we were talking about the old crude oil. The fact that it was in some serious trouble. Let's get this up here. And we will notice here that we had a 5% uh, drop here just the other day. And now we've gone down and we've we've held some pretty good support. Now, what we've done thus far, and those of you that belong to the 24-7 service know that, you know, we were very bearish this. And when we got down to that level, we were looking for a 38% retracement. And uh, we, we started that Sunday night and we got it uh, last Last night, and we got it also uh, during the day when we got up to that uh, 5640, uh, I believe. And since that time, it has been, uh, you know, just drifting lower. And I believe that with that wide range bar to the downside, 
it certainly appears that this market wants to uh, to be going uh, a lot lower. But you know that's neither here nor there. Now tomorrow we're probably going to have, and I believe we're going to have our good friend Arch Crawford from Crawford Perspectives as our guest. And then later in the week we hope to have Bill Meridian from Cycles Research Vienna Austria as our guest, which would be uh, also a nice thing to listen to because boy, both of those guys have been pretty much spot on, especially uh, Bill Meridian. My goodness, he's been, uh, well, the bonds haven't done too much, but boy, he's certainly been right about the stock market uh, and, the, uh, and the gold market too. All right, let's take a look here at the, uh, one of the questions someone had was about uh, uh, cross, cross markets. This happens to be the Canadian dollar, the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and that's overlaid on the crude oil chart. The crude oil chart is the candlestick chart. Let's try that again, Larry. The Canadian, do Canadian dollar is the candlestick chart, and the blue line is the, crude, is the crude oil chart. Now, you'll see at certain times there is a correlation, but folks, that's the only time you see a major divergence here. This is what means a lot, is look at the major divergence that you had back in October when uh, the Canadian dollar is going down and crude oil is going straight up. Then you have the Canadian dollar going straight up and the crude oil coming straight down in December. That's what you want to look for, and you don't need a diversion chart to figure that out. So to trade off of this is to try to make a, uh, a statement that, yes, when crude oil goes up, the Canadian goes up, or vice versa. I just don't think you can. John Murphy has written a book about the intermarket relationships, uh, and I, I keep that book here on my desk, and I, I've found very few of them that give, you know, they'll give you some percentages, but, you know, if you're looking for a percentage, just look for ABCD patterns that you've got some ratios lined up. You know, that's really what you're trying to do when you're, when you're a technical analysis. You're trying to say, uh, in fact, we covered this in the newsletter this week, and we, we talk about the ABCD pattern. Why in the world would anybody want to sell the S&P at 3155? And the reason was, is it was just such a low risk at that point. And you had a 1.618, you had a three drive to a top pattern. Whether you did it or not, you know, I don't know, but that was uh, that was something that looked like it might possibly happen. And now we're down, uh, like Tommy said, we're down 65 handles here in just a, a very, very short period of time. So uh, let's just see here for one second. I want to double check something just to see what we're doing here because uh, there we go. Oh, there we are, right on the old money. Honey, hold on just a second here. Wow, we got down to 82. That's a pretty big low here. Let's get down here one second, folks. We are at a very critical level. Now, folks, this is experimental. I'm just going to bring this up here because, uh, you know, sometimes this stuff works and sometimes it doesn't. But you'll, you'll see what we've been watching so far. Let's get up here. Uh, let me see. 82 to 53. We're down 70 handles. That's a, a big move down here. But sometime, possibly, and I'm just saying possibly here. Let's get this up here so you can take a quick look at it. And all you want to do now is to look, see, because we're, we are eight minutes past this. If this market is not starting to go up here in about 10 minutes, then this thing is going to be in big trouble all the way uh, for quite a while, it looks like. So let's just do one other thing to make it make it look just a tiny bit easier. We'll just get the daily up here. Wow, you can see the, well, there, here, let's just get this daily up. You can see the 382 retracement in this is uh, all the way down to uh, 30, 39. So uh, that's what you could possibly be looking at. But with those two big bars down that you're seeing right there coming off of that 1.618 expansion, which is very similar to what we saw in the Dow Jones, uh, that is uh, very, very important. That 1.618 number is uh, uh, just really, really important, as we've always said. But watch it here the next 20, 30 minutes, because we should get a little bounce, and that's what you'd be wanting to look at, is if we do get this little bounce. These two big days down, uh, go back to look in July, folks. You see the big days down we had in early July? You see that? And then look what happened in September. The big bars down. It's telling you it wants to go lower. So that's what you're looking at. The news is following the trend, so who knows what's going to happen. I, you know, We have to wait and see. We're having a little bit of a bounce in the bonds, which we still expect uh, the bonds to go nowhere. I think we've made a major top in those darn things, but uh, that's neither here nor there of what we're watching. So pay attention to this because uh, this market has made a major turn up in here. And remember, we talked about open interest several times because even when the market was exploding on that big day when we up 280 points, I believe, 
we had drops in open interest in all the major indices. And this past, uh, the past uh, rally up here was the same thing. We made new highs, uh, you know, drop in open interest. That means new buyers are not coming into the party, folks. So we need to pay uh, very, very close attention to that, at least if you're doing technical analysis. And I think a lot of you folks are doing that. Okay, we had another question pop up here. Let's get the answer to it if we possibly can. That is in the old futures market. So if you'll give me a second, I wanted to bring it up. And it's about the old uh, L sugar. And you'll so see here, we'll get this up here. We think we made some type of a little high here in the sugar market. Um, I don't know where we are. Uh, we shouldn't get much above 1,300 here in the March sugar. I don't know where we're trading right now. But there's a lot of resistance coming in at that uh, 1,300 level in the March sugar. If someone would be kind enough to tell me whether this is going to be uh, looking or not, we'll be able to see if that's the case. So we'll have to do, you know, one thing at a time. So we'll be able to see it. Okay, so we'll take a little break here. And uh, we'll be back and we'll ask some more questions 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and um, uh, no one has been able to tell me the last price of the March sugar, so you'll have to bear with me a second here, and I'll see if I'm able to get that doggone thing up here just to be safe. And uh, that would be right here, I believe. Let's see if we can get that up here. Uh, you were trading at 1289, so it's no big deal. Hasn't uh, really done anything. That top is in uh, pretty good. So watch this level here at 3079 here in the S&P, folks. Uh, that's the that's the fail safe. We get below 3079, we're probably going to get down to that uh, 382 retracement rather more quickly than we than we might want to uh, see. So uh, we. Would watch it very, very closely is what I would be uh, very, very closely watching. Now, gold has had a really nice move here, folks. Those of you that uh, take the 24-7, you'll be able to see that, uh, you know, hold on one second. I have to do something. Okay. Okay. Let's get back here for one second here. And I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you about the gold market here. Just let me get this up here so we can do I'm trying to do two things at once, which uh, sometimes when you just back from the old thing, we'll get a uh, close. Oh, there we get the gold there. We, here's where we are right here. This is where we are in the old gold market. Uh, what we have right now, 12, thank you very much, Marshall and Bill. I appreciate that uh, price out. Here's the gold. Uh, we're still looking for potential here of a 1440, uh, excuse me, 1415. This is February gold now, folks. But if we get above 1500, that's going to be bullish. Now, what we're doing right now is you'll notice, uh, you'll see that price of 1485. That's a very, very important number, folks. Uh, the reason for that is you remember those harmonic numbers that we talk about all the time bada bing bada boom we're right near that harmonic number and we're completing a very small uh, ABCD here so pay a little bit of attention to that here between 1485 and 1487 but anything above 1400 uh, you know, 1500 in that gold to me would be uh, very bullish from a technical standpoint. And believe me, you know, we had a really nice move down. Uh, those equal moves that we had uh, were certainly telling us that 1456 basis the February gold was something pretty important. Now we're 30 some bucks above it. So we'll see whether that's going to mean very much or not. So that's what we're really watching about. Someone asked a question about how these harmonic numbers uh, came to, uh, to be and that was basically because of Jim Twentyman. Jim uh, is a really astute market technician. He had studied GAN for quite a while and GAN's laws of vibration and stuff. And he had noticed that we had this MIPS computer, which looks at uh, millions of integrals per second, MIPS. And uh, it would constantly be spinning out these numbers that we would see over and over again. And so he named them harmonic numbers. And uh, so that's what we look for. Each each uh, entity that trades has its own harmonic number, and you can find it yourself. The the two easy guidelines are is if you'll take uh, three percent of the value of what the thing is, you'll have a pretty good idea of uh, what the uh, harmonic number is. Just take say gold right now. We're trading at uh, let's say fourteen eighty. Three percent of that is fifteen. So that's about. That's saying it's about 46 bucks. Well, whether that's or not, I, I believe it. Well, I know that gold, we already know the gold is $60, $64 and uh, uh, $32. So we already know that one. But if you just do that, but the easiest way to do it is to take 100 uh, price swings on a 30-minute chart and start to compare them to see how they are. You'll notice that all of the swings that you're able to see that are the term you know, that you can see them look at them but they'll all be related they'll all be related by 618 1.27 or 1.618 that's the thing that uh, that you want to be uh, watching uh, very very closely so that's what I would be watching right now I the the, the gold is certainly uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing here so pay uh, pay close attention to it and by golly uh, you know it might have a heck of a run here it, you know on the technical side of this, folks, if you look at that gold chart, we've been in a 10-week correction that's dropped 160 bucks, and believe me, 
that's the first big A, B, C, D this. Okay, Mr. Z is asking me who taught me the 1.27 and 1.618. The 1.618 expansion levels were talked to me by John Hill in 1970 when we were up in San Francisco. He had a little proportional divider there, but uh, I didn't understand. Believe me, this is 1970. Now you got to fast forward 18 years. 18 years, folks, to 1988 when I'm in Chicago and I'm watching Bryce Gilmore give a presentation and he was showing me 127 and all these numbers that I had not heard of, even though they were numbers of sacred geometry. And he had this program called the Wave Trader that put everything together in a beautiful, like when you're seeing these butterflies and Gartleys that we post here. He was doing this on a computer, and I said, wow, this is really something. And then he had a little gauge there that said uh, if there were so many ratios present at one time, the ratio went from 5 to 10. And when you had a 10, the market almost always turned at a 10. Yes, it's still online. You can still get it. I don't know how updated it is and stuff, but it's still, I think it's very, very good. And it gives you those ratios that to all line up. And that's what we're doing, folks, when we're, when we're watching that uh, – the uh, let's just give you an example here because it was the same thing that we were. Let's just do it with the spy because you'll be able to see it real easy. If you put up the spy here, the cash S and P index, this is what the wave trader would look like. It would show this one, two, three drive to a top pattern. Now, he didn't call it that; it was something else. And then you'll see the you'll see the butterfly pattern. That's the one that uh, you know that I renamed it because uh, when I saw these on the wave trader, I thought it would be a good pattern. The three drive pattern comes from. Uh, uh, Gartley and also from George Cole, the keys of speculation. Those book, book, both were written into the 30s. They had those back in those days. And of course, the ABCD comes from Gartley and also from uh, uh, Wyckoff, but Gartley was before Wyckoff. So, you know, Gartley was the first one to really, to really show it as an ABCD pattern. Now, remember, uh, Ralph Elliott, he started in 1938, and Gartley had already published his book in 1937, so he was—these well, guys had to know each other because they were all from the East Coast and New York, so I'm sure that they were banging heads as they went through, you know, some of these things that they're looking at uh, uh, here today. So let's uh, keep in mind here that we have a big move down here in stocks for two days. That's, a, that's, the, that's the red flag, folks. That's a calling card saying, you know, something's not right in real River City. And I don't think it has anything to do with China or any of that other stuff. It's mainly because there's a major cycle out there that has finally hit. And whether it, <laughs> it's even going to go back and make new highs or not, which it certainly could. But that those big wide-ranging bars are pretty good. Oh, we've got uh, Mr. Z on the line here, but we've got a break coming up. Z, are you on the line? I am, um, sir. I will hold through the break. Okay, what we're going to do here, we'll talk up until the break. You want to take a look at the March wheat, is that correct? Well, the March Chicago wheat, which uh, okay. just okay. Uh, to make the statement to you and your listeners, March Chicago wheat is not, I repeat, not March Kansas City wheat nor March Minneapolis wheat. And the three of them do not look... Uh, like one another whatsoever. And that's the subject I wanted to ask you about, please. I'll post the March wheat and we'll talk about it when you get back. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger Fresh Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger Fresh Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with uh, Mr. Z, one of our specialists in just about everything, but especially the greens. We're taking a look at the Chicago March wheat. Mr. Z, you've got the floor. Tell us what you're looking at, my friend. Oh, my Lord. I, uh, I hadn't done the chart work myself on the Chicago March wheats. I'm looking at Tiger TV right now, and I see the high, Yeah, uh, excuse me, Friday that was. That was right. Well, it was near exactly the FIB 786. What do you know? Yes, it was. Yeah, what a lucky guess, huh? <laughs> it was also <laughs> one day, one day from the uh, the new moon too. But what, what do you what do you see between the Kansas City? You know, see these these commodities other than wheat are not acting like there's going to be any trade agreement with China. I mean, they're going down. I mean, soybeans, all of them. They're just uh, meal. Everything is very very weak. It doesn't look like there's any trade agreement coming. That's uh, I, I, that's what uh, it looks like I'll to me. Share something, and I just want to. I apologize for jumping in on you there. Mm, please come in any time. Yeah, I want to make the statement uh, for, for my benefit, first and foremost, but yours and your listeners. It is imperative that uh, when assessing the supply demand on these markets, you cease listening to headlines of China trade deal or no <laughs> China trade deal. The, and here's, I'll just give you an example. Um, in the soybean market, uh, of course, the important thing that determines price, of course, is uh, supply and demand. And um, what we can say on the demand side, and this is just fact, uh, in the soybean market for the United States, export or excuse me, export demand for soybeans uh, up through here uh, last week, November 29th, for this current crop year. Export demand is higher than a year ago, and China is in there buying uh, regularly. Uh, so forget the, uh, the idea of a trade deal or not. Just look at what people are actually doing. And it's not a secret that they're buying. They just come in there been buying every week. Uh, so, yes, soybean price is declining, but it has nothing to do with the fact that or with 
the uh, with the idea that some people falsely make that China isn't buying United States soybeans. They are. Um, soybean uh, prices are declining, but obviously there are other things at play um, uh, aside from uh, Chinese demand for U.S. beans. Why do you think the bean? I mean, is it because of what's happened in uh, uh, the, the the amount of beans that are coming out of uh, South America? Is that you know just because uh, they're 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 about half the, the world demand now, aren't they? They're pretty close. Uh, yes. Or... Uh, one thing that China has done in response to U.S. actions, Trump administration actions. Uh, China has gone shopping uh, very uh, extensively around the globe to ensure uh, greater supplies of agricultural commodities uh, uh, aside from the U.S. So, for example, um, in, uh, in Brazil, uh, China is financing uh, increased soybean acreage, and, and of course, in Brazil, Soybeans have already been planted and, you know, will be harvested come February and March. Uh, the Chinese are also financing the build-out of greater port facilities in Brazil and Argentina, for what it's worth. And frankly speaking, the Chinese are actually uh, uh, doing deals with Russia. And believe it or not, Russia looks like it's ramping to become a sizable soybean producer itself. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yes, uh, apparently price is slipping uh, on account largely of expectation that uh, come January, February, in through next summer, uh, soybean supplies will grow quite sizably in Brazil and Argentina and Russia, but also the U.S. And just recall, Larry, uh, this past year in the United States, because of that very wet uh, very late and wet spring, soybean um, acreage, uh, or yes, planted soybean acreage was way down. Think the number 77 million acres. That compares to 90 million acres of soybeans back in 2018. So um, coming uh, next year, uh, the U.S. farmer is guessed to be planting something north of 85 million acres up from 77 this past summer. So people are looking ahead at potential future supplies and saying, holy, you know, holy cow, unless we get yeah. drought someplace, we're going to have an oversupply problem. Well, it makes good sense. What what are you hearing uh, about the uh, you know the livestock? I mean, cattle been going up forever, but what about the uh, the hogs? I mean, hogs should be. You think hogs with all that news? And there's again a technical indicator that uh, you don't want to listen to the news, but you know, they're telling us that the the hog crop is still really bad over there. Yet uh, they're not buying any of our hogs. That's for sure. No, that's incorrect. China has ramped up purchase of U.S. pork in the past nine months. That's the other, that's the other yeah. uh, problem with listening to headlines. Yeah. Um, uh, there, is a tra there are trade disputes, but here's the fact of the matter. China is, is uh, importing more U.S. pork than the year before, and U.S. pork exports are up sizably year over year. Uh, and uh, say Feb hogs at 66, here's the idea. If not for those increased exports, given very large supplies of U.S. pork, big hog herd, price would be uh, down under 55. So uh, price is up um, uh, on account of that very idea of ap uh, African swine fever having decimated the Chinese herd. So uh, once again, you hear the talk. Got to go look at the numbers, see what they are. Um, and it all makes perfect sense where Feb hogs are 66. Can they rally some from here? Sure. But if not for that export demand, which is increased this year, you'd be 20% uh, less. 
Oh, wow. That's really amazing. Well, I'll tell you, John, I'm thankful that I'm a technician because of some of the stuff that you see in the news, the response to how the market reacts to it, you know that there's something not right, you know, and so I thank God that, you know, being a technician, you're at least looking at the bars, there's a, prices are going up, people are buying, prices are going down, the pieces are, uh, prices are selling, or people are selling, so as long as we got that on our side, buddy, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> So, yeah, can, can I ask you, uh, the reason sure. I called in, wanted to ask if either Rich Anderson or Simon in conversation with you yes. had uh, shared any opinion or ideas with you regarding that Chicago wheat. Um, the Chicago wheat, just for backgrounders' sake, up there at that 535 March Chicago wheat, this is a full, almost a full dollar higher than Kansas City wheat. Yep. Uh, normally, uh, Chicago wheat is cheaper than Kansas City wheat because of lower protein levels. The reason it's higher in price was because that very wet spring uh, in the soft red winter wheat belt last year uh, just decimated the crop. Uh, a lot of a lot of that Chicago wheat variety just wasn't harvested. And by the way, even though that contract is the most heavily traded in the U.S., it's actually the smallest of the four yeah. wheat varieties grown in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, John, uh, we got to pay a few. We, we got to pay a few. I've thought. I've always um, marveled at uh, Kansas City wheat is the biggest. Minneapolis wheat is the second biggest actual crop size. So, what is, what is Rich inside telling you on that, if anything? I'll I'll ask him. I talk to him every day. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we broke down below that uh, level that I was looking at, uh, 30. Uh, 79. We got down to 3070. Uh, I believe that that 3085 now is going to be a little bit of a problem today for the market. It looks like it's. Uh, oh, just a second here. Oh, God, it I messed up. <laughs> oh boy, hold on just a second. This is not going to work. Okay. Anyway, that's what I would be watching. Uh, remember, we had that big ABCD pattern there at the. Uh, uh, in the S&P, the Dow Jones, if you get the newsletter, you'll see all of them were there. They were all doing the same thing. But there was one that wasn't. And I just should, I think we should bring this to your attention because it's really worth the price of admission, you know, to look at this one. Because a lot of people trade it. It's it's fact, it's, it's the second best traded of all of the stock indices. It's the it is the Russell. And if you take a look here at the Russell, this is what's interesting here is uh, on last Friday, uh, we hit that 78% level absolutely spot on. That was from the high way back in August. You see the head and shoulders pattern that we had that worked for a pretty nice move about three and a half percent. Then we had the three drive to a top pattern and that completed up there at that 163 and change. And that's also under a little pressure today. So these markets have had a little bit of a problem problem here. They're not going to go straight down. There's going to be some really great swings here. This is why the volatility is going to be really, really spectacular, I think, for 2020. And I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, that's hopefully we'll be able to see some of that. We've had some great volatility this year, too. But I think next year it's even going to be greater because there's so many things out there uh, willing to uh, make these prices jump up and down, which they don't really need a lot of help sometimes. But the news is always in there uh, doing it. I believe that some of these commodities are going to bottom in here. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a sell-off some more here in the corn and also the beans. And we'll be watching for a, a buy here. Uh, very, very shortly here in both corn and especially the soybean meal. So we'll be watching that very closely. I will have an answer for Mr. Z on that Kansas City, Minneapolis wheat. Of course, Rich is in there. Listen, live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.